is there some practical ways that we can keep that passion and keep that soul healthy and make it healthier? In Mark chapter 8, verse 22, it says, They came to Bethsaida and they brought a blind, they brought a blind man to him. They brought a blind man to Jesus and implored him to touch him. Now, this word implore, it actually is the word they begged him. So they came. So they who's the pr proverbial they in this passage is really important to not miss some of the things in the Bible that tell us how to have a healthy soul. They brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to touch him. So the, the first thing that I see here, because this to me is the recipe of a healthy soul, we'll get into I'll show, show you some a few practical things. Yeah. But the first thing here is he says they meaning the friends that this blind man had, they were the friends of this blind man. You know, you could be blind. But if you know how to pick the right friends, you're you're well on your way to having a healthy soul. That's so good. You know, you can't always choose who your family is. Yeah. You can't choose who your family is, right? You can't choose who your family is, but you can choose who your friends are. Right. And the power of associations is so important. The, I call it the power of associations. Who you associate with is essential to what kind of power you're going to have in your life or what lack of power people that will drain you and drain all the energy of your soul or people that will feed you yeah. and feed energy and feed off of each other energy for the soul and food for the soul and and meat for the soul. So to me, Jesus illustrates for us the first thing. Look, sometimes people could have a real disadvantage, like in this man's case, he has a real disadvantage in that he's blind. But the but he had an advantage that made up for his disadvantage. Right. And the advantage that made up for his disadvantage is that he had good friends. He chose wisely who he surrounded himself with, because if you have several people, if you even have one person, but in this case, they which means it's more than one, they beg Jesus. If you have friends that will beg Jesus, to do something for you, right. then you must have done some really kind things to, to those people to make them care about you that much. Yeah. You might you must be pretty important to them and you must have invested into their lives somehow for for them to beg Jesus to to heal, to heal him. Yeah. This is beautiful to me is the beauty of friendships, the beauty of healthy relationships. And that's really what a church is for. A church Same. is not just to gather and tell you what to do. A church is to create an environment for healthy relationships yeah. and an environment to find good friends and an environment to be a good friend. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter, I think it's chapter 27. I have to find it later. But he said, he who wants friends show himself friendly. If you want to have friends, you have to show yourself friendly. Mm, that's good. A lot of people are like, I don't have any friends. There's not the right friends. But if you show yourself friendly, if you are friendly yourself, you'll have friends. Yeah. And one of the healthiest things that we can do for our soul is surround ourselves with people that build us up, people that encourage us and people we encourage yeah. and we build up but people that feed off of each other. It's not codependency, but it's mutual respect and a mutual desire to build one another up.